Life Audio. Hello and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. We also have a Facebook group, Daily Bible Podcast, so just look under groups. And I would love to hear, Michelle said that she's loving the book of Joshua. Is Joshua your mm-hmm. favorite book as you're reading through it? Did you love mm-hmm. one of the other books? I remember a while ago someone said they love the book of Job. I mean, let us know inside the group what your favorite book is so far. So, you know, we're not going to put in Psalms or any of those yet, but so far <laughs> in your reading, I want to know what your favorite book is. It's encouraging us when we hear from you, just because I I just think that we all learn from each other. And so if someone were to come in and say, my favorite book is Deuteronomy because it's just, it's so uplifting and it really is encouraging because then all of a sudden my mind goes, oh yeah, that's so true. I wasn't thinking about it from that perspective. And so I love it when people are jumping into um, the Facebook community, Daily Bible Podcast. Okay. Jumping in, let's jump into Joshua. Joshua 18 and 19 is what we read today. And remember, we are still dividing up the land. There is a lot of land to to be divided up because there's a lot of people. I think we forget just how many people this, like Israel amassed. I mean, there was just a lot of people. So it may seem tedious to you, But this is of utmost Mm -hmm. importance to the Israelites, like the receiving of this land. They have been promised since the days of Abraham. So they have heard these promises and they have wondered, when is it going to be our turn? And they've waited and they've wandered and they've camped and they've fought. And (laughs) this was their inheritance. Can you imagine having all of a sudden realizing I don't have to camp anymore? Like, Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a home, whatever that home looks like. I'm going to have a home and a land to relax and settle, a place to raise my family, uh, a place to provide for my family. That there just had to have been so much excitement as they're receiving um, these, the dividing up or the allotment of their land. They're just, I can't say it enough. There's excitement in the air. There is. And because they're getting something there. I remember when John and I, bought our first home it's like it, it wasn't even paid off it's like but it was ours like it was ours mm-hmm. and they theirs was paid off like they didn't have to make payments on their land right and exactly so, yeah it's being allotted it's being they have their territory now they have their land and so I think you're right you know our eyes might glaze over like oh they're just dividing this and that but then we need to say like what is God's message to us so mm-hmm. in Joshua 18 3 So Joshua said to the Israelites, how long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land that the the God of your ancestors has given you? So even though this land was promised, the people still had to take action and Mm -hmm. they started had to possess the land that God gave them. They had to trust him and obey his commands in order to receive it. So they had to actually go and move in. Um, And then finally the dividing was done and the land was handed out. So we finally see like, okay, you're, you have your land. And I love this, how Joshua got his own inheritance. He mentioned um, inheritance. So it said that Joshua got his piece of the land and uh, it called him out specifically. And what I saw, you know, a good leader always puts the needs of others before themselves. And Joshua mm-hmm. was not only concerned about dividing the land among the tribes, but making sure that everyone received their rightful inheritance. Um, mm-hmm. So he waited And as he waited for his turn, he received his portion like everyone else. And the fact that he was, you know, we're we're talking about, oh, it's so tedious to hear about this. But Joshua was making sure that people got what they need. Like we were talking about yesterday when they were saying, we don't have enough land. He's like, okay, well, then go into those woods and hills and you can get more land. Like he was actively caring for the people around him. And I think that is such a good leader. And I think, you know, Moses was 
a leader that led them for all those years. But mm-hmm. now that we have Joshua, it wasn't just the battle. Like he was the warrior leading them. He was concerned for the people and making sure everyone had exactly what they needed. And that just makes me think of like my husband, like, okay, you got what you need. All right. You got you what you need. <laughs> we're Okay. We're all good. Like, you know, we're, we're everyone got has what they need and we could finally rest and enjoy it. And that's really what I saw in Joshua here, that he was such a good leader. I love how you bring that out, Trisha, because I did not grasp by that. I, I did see that Joshua was a good leader. Um, and just as I've read through the book of Joshua, I'm like, oh yeah, he's a great leader. He's he's Moses like he in and everything. But yet you're right. I mean, he is making sure everybody got what they've been promised, what they've been portioned, Mm -hmm. what they've been allotted. He made sure that he sat down with his leaders who were, you know, portioning out everything and made sure that it happened. He was right there. Even though we don't necessarily see it, we know someone had to have been there because we know that he, Joshua, like Moses, had this amazing relationship with God. So we know Mm -hmm. that God was sharing with Joshua what had to been done and Joshua had to then share on down the ranks. And, and so I love how you pointed out that, yeah, he was there making sure everybody got what, what they were to receive. And Mm -hmm. it's just such a beautiful thing to have a leader like Joshua. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's an awesome man. I've got to say I'm, that. I'm liking, Bold and I'm liking courageous. Joshua. Yeah. I'm I'm really liking all these character character people as we get to know them better. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, he's Joshua's really cool. He's a warrior. But then the more you read, the more you really see their heart. And it's like, wow, these are amazing, amazing men of God. Mm-hmm. They are. Okay, well, we need to take a quick break right here. We need to hear from our sponsor of the day, and then we'll be back with the word of the day. Stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by He Gets Us, a nationwide campaign all about raising the respect and relevance of Jesus. Did you see the Super Bowl ads about Jesus? Are you wondering how you can get involved? He Gets Us is a multi-year effort to raise the respect and relevance of Jesus in the United States. Thanks to this unprecedented campaign, millions of Americans are discovering the life-changing impact of Jesus. And we want you to be a part of the movement. Join more than 45,000 He Gets Us fans, getting the latest updates, inspiration, prayer ideas, and easy-to-share resources via text message by subscribing to our fans' community. To do so, text FANS to 70193. By being a fan, you can get exclusive updates on new ads, events, and other exciting news related to the He Gets Us movement. We'll also keep you inspired by giving you access to reading plans, prayer guides, and other tools to help on your spiritual journey. Join this community of like-minded individuals who share your passion for spreading the love of Jesus. Simply text FANS to 70193 to join today. The greatest red carpet you'll ever walk is through your front door. We're Dr. Josh and Christy Straub, marriage and leadership coaches and hosts of the Famous at Home podcast. With a realistic, grace-filled look at the struggles families face today, we cover topics designed to help you become a rock star under your roof, set healthy rhythms between work and home, and build a rock-solid marriage. To listen now, go to lifeaudio.com or search Famous at Home on your favorite podcast platform. Okay, so one of the words that we saw over and over Mm -hmm. and over in today's reading is the word allotment. We see the first allotment of the land, the second allotment of the land, the third allotment of the land. After each tribe receives their allotment, then we see the homeland allocated to the clans of the tribe of Zebulun or of Gad or of Judah or something else, so someone else. So we're seeing a lot of allotments. So I was like, well, allotment seems like mm-hmm. that would be a pretty good word of the day. Well, what does allotment mean? So the allotment is the amount of something allocated to a particular person. So the synonym for allotment is to share, ration, or limit. 
And allotments usually have limits. And we see that. We see the territories that were given to each, each clan, to each tribe, then broken down to each family. We see those territories. We see those boundaries. We see those allotments. But the allotment that the Israelites received in God and the allotment that we receive in God is limitless. Mm. So when you think about one side, there is some limits on it. But when you think about the other side, the flip side, it's limitless. Oh, that's such a good point. Like God owned it all. He owns the cattle mm. on every hill and yeah. <laughs> every blade of grass. I mean, all of it. I love that. And, it, you know, just thinking about the allotment and everyone getting their own. I mean, when we have, you know, we have a cake or pie, like I got to make sure and cut every piece the same because the kids are going to be like, her piece is bigger. Well, God yeah. and Joshua were making sure everyone got what they needed. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't even exactly fairness. It wasn't like we're exactly getting this many cubits of space or whatever, but he, every, each person got what they needed. I also thought of allotment when, uh, Every time we're on road trips and we go through McDonald's drive through like, which I'm like, oh, I don't want to go through McDonald's drive through again. But uh, it, it's a running joke because so many times my order's missed. I don't even know how it happened. Interesting. There's like a certain number of cheeseburgers or a certain number of nug nuggets. And it'll be like, okay, I, I'm handing out everything. And we get to the end. And I'm like, it's gone. <laughs> I don't have anything. Um, so it's a running joke. Mom, did you get your food? And because we do order, like we're ordering six cheeseburgers and two nuggets. I mean, right. it's just a lot of food. They hand you big bags. You think, oh, surely everything's in here. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> mine is. It's your missing. diet plan, Trisha. It's, it's my diet. diet plan. Plan. Let's go to McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah, I don't need that McDonald's anyway. Um, but you know, of course, I'm handing it all out first. It's not like, okay, this is all mine. Oh, sorry, Casey, you don't have any food today, but I'm handing it out. But the cool thing that happens is all of a sudden, like, mom doesn't have any food. So then they start passing up nuggets and fries. And pretty soon my, I have a, like a, a lot full of food because everyone's sharing with me. And so I mm. think, you know, when we are a leader and we're caring about other people, then mm -hmm. it's like an example to people like, oh, okay. So they, and they make sure they made sure that Joshua um, got his land. And so, you know, Joshua was a good leader that he made sure and he was selfless, but I think everyone else is like, okay, now, now it's Joshua, it's your turn. Um, and so I, I started mm -hmm. thinking about just leadership in our home and how we can be like Joshua and be that example. And yeah. years ago, I wrote a book called lead like Jesus. And it was with Ken Blanchard and he wrote the one minute manager, which is a bestseller and, and Phil mm -hmm. Hodges. And it takes prioritizing our relationships with people and with God. And by leading, we lead healthy relationships, health, healthy community. Um, we build a good environment and it's not about having control, but serving others. So like we were saying earlier, Joshua had control, like God gave him the authority to give these allotments out, but he was making sure that each person had exactly what they needed. And I think mm -hmm. just looking at that, it's such a good example. It just reminds me as a parent, like, yes, I want to be selfless because God's calling me to be selfless or to help or to serve or making sure everyone gets what they need. But then the example is hopefully one that our kids or our neighbors or our friends will follow when they go, Oh, okay. You're making sure everyone else has what they need. Um, I will make sure that you get what you need. And so mm -hmm. it's just a great example for us to, you know, as we're thinking about allotment, making sure everyone gets what they need and God will take care of us. And hopefully other people will take care of us too. That is such a good point that God will take care of us because mm -hmm. we need to remember that we have the perfect allotment that we need for our days. We know, I mean, I think intellectually we know that, but sometimes it doesn't feel that way in our heart, but we have the perfect allotment we need. Remember like the Israelites, when they were wandering in the wilderness, they had the perfect allotment of manna each day mm -hmm. of quail each day. And on the days that they needed to collect more, well, that manna and that quail, they never, it never molded. Now on the days that they didn't need to collect, it molded. But the point yeah. is, is that they had the perfect allotment. And in all of those days and all those years that they were wandering, their clothes never wore out. 
again, the perfect allotment. And, and so I'm just thinking, there are so many days that I sit there and I don't think I have the perfect allotment. I want this, or I want this, or I want something else. And, and so I'm just reminding myself as I'm reminding you that maybe we need to take some time today and think through mm-hmm. our allotments. What has God given us today? Like we know he's given us a lot. We know that he has given us himself. We know he has given us the perfect allotment and that allotment is best. It's the best possible allotment that we could ever receive. And so I I guess I'm just encouraging everybody because I'm trying to encourage my heart. I need to think through what is my allotment from God? Because it is perfect. And so what does that look like? And it's enough. And it is enough. Yeah. That's exactly. We have a lot because God has given us an allotment. <laughs> so there you go. There's our, our catchy phrase. I of the love day. how you just played off of that so, so well. <laughs> kind of play with words throughout my day. So it just kind of comes. <laughs> well, would you pray for us today, Trisha? Absolutely. Um, dear Heavenly Father, first of all, Everything we have is from you. It's all from your good hand, whether we mm-hmm. have um, what we seem to be a lot or it seems to be a little, mm-hmm. it is enough. And I thank you for those things. I thank you that you have given us allotment, that you have given us exactly what we need. Um, Lord, that even though it may seem like someone else has more than us or someone else has less than us that you know our needs lord and you know what we need to do with what you have given us i pray for contentment on our hearts today Mm -hmm. um and i also pray that we will be an example to those around us of what a good leader is like that Mm -hmm. we may think of others before ourselves and that we may um just care for others needs lord knowing that you are taking care of our needs and we just thank you and praise you for all that you have given us in your name we pray Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Well, tomorrow we are reading Joshua 19 verses 49, 50 and 51, just three little tiny verses mm-hmm. in four, in 19. Then moving on to Joshua 20 and Joshua 21 and then flipping over to 1 Chronicles 6 verses 54 through 81. I just want to take a second now to thank Life Audio. You would not be listening to the Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com and you're going to find other ways to encourage you in your walk with God and also strengthen you in your walk with God. And also want to thank Kristen and Andy. Thank you for your help. You guys are amazing. We love you. Thank you for making us look good behind the scenes. (laughs) And we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. This Easter, we want to invite you on a journey back to first century Palestine as we dive deeper into the lives of Simon Peter, Judas, Pilate, John, Mary Magdalene, and others in the Characters of Easter podcast. Hosted by Daniel Darling, the Characters of Easter will help you become acquainted with the unlikely people who witnessed the miracle of Christ's death and resurrection. Enter into their stories and ultimately draw closer to Christ Himself as you encounter Him through their experiences. This free 11-episode podcast provides a fresh approach to the Lenten season and can be used as a devotional or study for both individuals and groups. Visit lifeaudio.com today or search for the Characters of Easter in your favorite podcast app.